Mobile is on the main stage, and I don't know if you got the subliminal advertising, but I'm going to show it to you. It's right there <laughs> on the main stage at Think B2B, and it's right there. So all of you that go back and decide that you have to do mobile advertising, the next 29 minutes have nothing to do with it. It's the subliminal advertising from Google. Um, I want to start, I, I took note of something that Andy from GE said earlier in the day, which is we're looking for data points. We're looking for an understanding of the user, and we're looking for an understanding of the market. So I'm going to do 28 or 29 minutes on exactly that, uh, and then I'm going to give you a chance to ask some questions. And I know you've been sitting for a while, so I want to make it as interactive as possible. This is not the exhaustive talk. You have to come back for an entire day if you want the everything mobile. This is 28 minutes on what we think will be useful, and if we were in the audience, um, what we think you would want to hear from us. Uh, and so I apologize in advance if this isn't exactly what you want, uh, but I think this is the beginning talk on mobile. I'm going to start with a video uh, that I'll come back and explain. Can we run the video? Ever feel like you're missing out on mobile internet because smartphone plans cost too much? Well, T-Mobile's here to help. With America's largest 4G network, Facebook, <laughs> gaming, entertainment, the best of what the internet has to offer, right at your fingertips. T-Mobile gives you all this for just $49.99. Introducing T-Mobile's best plan ever. Unlimited data, talk, and text. Two lines, just $49.99 each. From America's largest 4G network. Now faster than ever. T-Mobile. Now, I love ninjas as much as the next guy, but two lines... $49.99, unlimited talk and text, right? Two lines, $49.99, unlimited talk and text. Why is T-Mobile promoting unlimited talk and text and data, right? Data is now central to the value proposition, right? It used to be that the spokes model was telling you about something and, and the spokes model was on the phone, right? Or they were telling you how many red dots or blue dots were on the map and how much coverage they have. But the service providers are now fighting over who can deliver you better data services, ninjas, slicing watermelons, and whatever else, but better data services for a cheaper and cheaper rate. And it was not always that way. And so my personal moment uh, uh, for Steve Jobs is that Steve Jobs is responsible for this. Um, and this started in 2007. So none of us knew it at the time. But with the launch of the iPhone, Steve Jobs removed Nokia, sorry, Nokia, as the company that governed how quickly we evolved as a mobile industry. Uh, and, and launched something which, which changed dramatically. And over the course of the last roughly four years, you have seen the networks improve. You've seen the speed of the devices and the processors and the screens improve. You've seen what you can do with the devices improve dramatically to a point now where you can walk into any of these stores, Verizon store, T-Mobile store, Sprint store, and for $99 with a one-year contract or for free with a two-year contract, you can get a large screen processor, a fast processor on a high-speed network. Right? And with that, you can consume all of the things, and if you like ninjas, you can slice watermelons. That is incredibly powerful. And why is that important? It's more important if the slides advance. Why is that important? Um, if you go back to that moment, that Steve Jobs moment, which we will very much give him, from 2007 on, we have seen a dramatic increase in the number of people who are accessing mobile data. And there's any number of different things. This is a requisite slide in any presentation about mobile is a rapid growth. Here we benchmark against desktop. Desktop is not going anywhere. And we will explain how they complement one another in a moment. But mobile is coming. Is this different from anybody's experience here? How many people have not used maps on their phone in the last 48 hours? Nobody? I've never asked that question. Nobody has not, double negative, used maps on their phone in the last 40 hours. I should stop right now. That's amazing. Nice job, everybody. The building. <laughs> My closing is that your phone is smarter than your cab driver. Um, uh, this almost becomes sort of second nature to us, but. By the end of the year, there's 310 or thereabouts million Americans. By the end of the year, more than half of them will have a smartphone in their pocket. I have a two and a half year old and a five year old. They will not be in the group that has them. All right? But of all Americans, including my two and a half year old and five year old, half Americans will have a smartphone. That's absolutely amazing. I also now have learned, because I get the question, I have to do the disclaimer. I am not expressing a bias for the West Coast versus the East Coast in this particular slide. So let's talk about what they're doing with it. 
So this is new data. This is, I think, three weeks old, something like that. This just came back. And so people ask us, and we pull data all the time for folks, how are tablets affecting behavior? What are people doing with their phones? And what are they doing with their tablets? So if I can try to explain what's going on here, we looked at search query volume. Search is our way of looking. And so I think it's more than a comment on search by time of day. So we're not making a statement that the green line and the red line are now approaching the blue line, although that's about a year away. What I'm telling you is that as a percentage of time of day, you see very different patterns in the usage of tablets. Smartphones are high-end devices, we call them, and desktop. So roughly, this is a weekday. Roughly, nobody, thank God, is on it before 6 a.m. Um, but then over the course of the workday, they spend their day with a possible lunch break on their desktop. And they ramp usage throughout the day. But round about 3 o'clock, when kids get out of school, you start to see people on their phones, and you start to see tablet usage. And tablet usage ramps into the evening. So for me, this is definitive smoking gun proof that tablets are being used in the evenings on the couch as TV companions. Not their only use, but their prevalent use. Dramatic use. What we see with mobile devices, and this slide doesn't completely show it, but you see it when you see the weekday slide, weekend slide that I'll show you next, is that mobile devices are being used as the out and about complement to the desktop. They're being used when we don't have access to the desktop, and they're being used when we're out in our community. So your digital connectivity, connectivity used to stop when you walked out the door. We're now taking our digital connectivity with us into the community, and we're interacting with the physical world around us, and we're interacting with the maps as we try to find the difficult to find building on 16th and 8th. If you look at weekends, it's even more pronounced. I can't wander far away from the podium. Uh, we're not on our PCs on the weekend, thank God. However, we are on our phones even more on the weekend. We're using it to find the best buy to find the flat screen TV. We're using it to check maps. We're using it for a lot of different things. Presumably, we're using ninjas to slice watermelons on the weekends. But you see it as a complementary behavior. Uh, and, and we've done a lot more research on this. And we can go deeper to the extent that this is useful for you. But smartphones have become a complement to the desktop. Uh, and there is an entirely different usage pattern of queries. They're very navigational. They're very informational. They're very immediate. Lots of data in this area. This is the last slide I'm going to show on the data about the users. I'm going to try to race through it in the interest of getting you to the finish line today. But there's lots more data. Please talk to your Google Teams, and we can help you understand how the consumer is with your keywords and on particular things that are of interest to you. Trying to bring this back to things that are interesting to this audience and thinking about who are the users on mobile. So the first thing to say is it's pretty much everyone. I sometimes make a joke, joke and say, it's not really grandma just yet, but it's everybody else. And we can reach them. And so you've started to see the Nielsen's and the Comscores of the world begin to track the audience and who can you find and what are they doing. And that data is available from Nielsen and Comscore. And we have it as well, and we can get it for you depending upon your audience, which people in this crowd differ on. And we do this for retailers, and we do this for autos, and we certainly do it for B2B as well. Very, very powerful way to reach that audience right now. Not two years from now when it grows. Mobile is a right now conversation. The, B2B, the small business owners are there, and this is something we think a lot about. Google's doing a lot of work to help small business owners get their business on mobile precisely because of the way the device is being used. So because the device is being used in the community, it's being used to walk around, we think it's more important for the small business owner to have a mobile site at times than a desktop site because that's how they're finding the cup of coffee or the pizza or the place to buy that item that they're looking for. And so increasingly an area of focus for us, they're already there. We're working to help them put their business on mobile so that when you're all using a local map or using queries to find something in your neighborhood that you find it. Jason, yes? Are those worldwide numbers or US numbers? I believe these are US numbers. Good question. Let's look at the footnote. Comscore plan metrics. I'm going to come back to you. I believe those are US numbers. US. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. This one you know. So I asked you the question about you using this group as a target segment. Um, you over-index on your use of this thing. You're using it for everything, and you got a lot of them. So we're going to count up now. How many people will start at two? Laptop and phone. How many people have two internet-connected devices? Two or more. Three or more. Your TV at home might or might not count. How many four or more? And here, five or more. Thank you. How many, pardon? I presume I would count a Wii. Our world is connected. There go the hands. <laughs> How many of you are ninjas on your Wii? Um, the, the, the point is that we over-index. I'm in this group. Uh, our kids over-index, and our kids will use this very naturally. Um, the technology is there. The connectivity is there. And it is changing how people 
interact with both the world around them, retail environments, and just about everything. This is probably the big message that, that wakes people up. This is incremental queries, and we can do this for any set of keywords. We can do it for the keywords you buy. If you're interested in any particular vertical, we can get this for you. This is the queries by vertical, if you will, coming from mobile devices. This is growth. So the blue line, just to be completely uh, obvious about it, is the growth of mobile on top of desktop queries. So you see mobile coming on as a complementary, and this is without tablets. You see the growth of mobile as an important access method for each of these categories. And again, we can pull this for your business so you understand, okay, 14, 16, 18, 20% of my queries are happening on a mobile phone. Quick serve restaurants. Who wants to guess where quick serve restaurants is? A percentage of queries happening on a mobile phone. Somebody who doesn't work for Google. 80%. No. 37% of queries for quick serve restaurants happening on a mobile phone and growing. So you've got half the device, half the Americans with a device and they're using it more. The Americans that have a smartphone are doing 50 times more searches than those that don't have a smartphone on mobile phones. So mobile has become an absolutely critical part of how your customer finds you. If it's 20%, that's one in five. That's one weekday each week that the customer can't find you if you don't have a proper site. So I said it's like not being open for business on Tuesdays. If you don't have a mobile site, you're not open for business one business day a week. So the, only, the first message we say to all of our customers, go look at your own mobile site critically. Can you do business, whatever your business is, on that mobile site? Can your user engage you on that property? And if you don't honestly think they can, please put your energy there. There's nothing more important than mobile. There's a lot more to do in mobile, and I'm going to show you. But if you haven't done that, please start there. Everybody appropriately? Focused? Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do now is a quick segment on the rest of the first part of this was sort of why to care about mobile, and we've got whole sort of long presentations we do. I'm going to pivot now into how. Let's say you agree with me, Jason, I get it. It's 20% of my queries or more. My customer's coming, and that number's only going to grow. What do I do? And I get this a lot, and this is where my team spends a lot of their energy, is helping people figure out how to take advantage of the mobile opportunity. And it's different. It's different depending upon who your business is and what you do. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples behind the back. The first thing is back to the site. Right? There's some very, very basic things that you should be doing with your mobile site, but you should think about it if people are using it for a minute and if they're using it with one finger because they're doing something else, cup of coffee or whatever in the other hand. So my guess is no matter what you did with your first take at your mobile site, you put too much on the page. That's okay. Rapid iteration. Track that, understand it, if you're an Omniture user, a Google Analytics user, understand how that user is engaging you, what they want to do and what they don't, and iterate on that really quickly because it's changing every month. I'm not going to run through these individually, but keep it simple. Big buttons. Watch what they do, iterate. I have a great story I tell about Pizza Hut. I'll tell it very quickly. Um, Pizza Hut launched thinking that people were going to use the mobile site for three things. To store their personalized pizza and have one-click ordering, to find a store, and to click to call to order. They really wanted people to do this, you know, store my pizza personalized thing. So that was in size 36 font. And then they 26 font and 24 font. Nobody but nobody stored their personalized pizza and clicked an order. A lot of people use the store locator and a lot of people click to call. You do not see personalized pizza one-click ordering on their site anymore. You see lots of here's how to find your local pizza. Iterate quickly, track it independently. People are going to use it differently than they use your desktop site. Please invest in the mobile web property. Quick market research. How many people, and this is not going to call anybody out and hold you to this, how many people are satisfied with their mobile web presence? I'm not going to pull you up on stage. I promise. Not one of you. How many people are going to leave here and go call someone and do something about that? Thank you very much. I'm all done. He is. There we go. I got one. Um, please invest in it. The user is trying to find you, and if they don't find you, they'll find someone else. A specific example that we thought called out from the category uh, of somebody who kept it simple, kind of took a new take. So this notion here of, um, of you self-identifying who you are and then customizing the experience was something I hadn't seen before. Segment, segment in their audience and trying to understand what people are doing. This is mostly a learning exercise for cybers. Three specific things and on, on how to reach and what to do with the consumer on the mobile data 
world, web and apps. All right? Three big things that you can do. The first is engage them when they're browsing, drive awareness. The second is find the people that are looking for you. Uh, and the last is build brand. And mobile is exceptionally good at all of these. And I'm going to give you three quick examples in the name of keeping this moving. So the first is, is find people while they're browsing and engage them. So this is a, an awareness-driven thing, and I'll give you some data in a minute. Very, very basic example from Cisco, where Cisco used sight, sound, motion. They used video. I'm not supposed to wander off the edge of the stage because you get feedback, but we'll see how far I can go. So what you see at the bottom is you see three buttons, right? Go to the site and some shopping-oriented th things and, and, and something to download. This is very basic interactivity using video assets that they already had. I recommend 30s or less. Do not make something longer than 30 seconds. But people will, and will consume video and love consuming video on a mobile phone. Very, very basic campaign driven from a banner or from an interstitial as you start an app in this particular case. And some very, very basic branding results. So we run brand studies whenever we possibly can. I would say the vast majority of our campaign, branding campaigns have them. And the vast majority of our campaigns, I can think of only a couple in five years of doing this that did not move the needle like this. People are engaging with mobile content. And we'll show you an example of what it looks like in a minute. They're engaging with it. The touch screen helps. This device is incredibly personal. And in many cases, they're sharing that. So they didn't do it. Let's see if I can go back. They did not put a send to friend thing here. But with a lot of movie trailers and car commercials, a lot of the stuff Mike Yap was just showing you, a lot of people are treating the ad like content and sending it on to friends. So it's a new environment, and you're able to absolutely move the needle on brands. Quickly, we're going to run a study, and don't run it just yet. This is an example of acquisitions. This is an example of information seekers finding people who are trying to solve a problem on a mobile phone and how effective mobile is at that. Can we run the video? Box offers a simple, scalable, and secure content sharing platform. We started as more of a consumer file sharing company. Now we've really moved into, into the enterprise. And so one of the challenges is making sure the product is simple and secure, even as we grow into companies as large as several hundred thousand users, which we're starting to. Mobile ads are, are pretty crucial considering that everything's increasingly becoming mobile. We need additional ways to reach people where they are. One of the biggest things that Google Mobile Ads has really helped us is to sort of quickly make that um, information awareness campaign available right away. We implemented the mobile ads about six months ago and at this point we're seeing about 30% of our overall Google conversions coming from mobile, uh, which is pretty incredible. Mobile search helps because I'm finding increasingly business users are using mobile devices to search for solutions. It's not just for games and music uh, and I need to make sure that Box is there when they're looking for something. We want to make sure that all our content all right. is available Maybe on all devices. One of the biggest things that we have to do with mobile is to make sure that... Sorry for cutting it off. Again, very conscious of time with this group. Uh, but I think you see mobile being effective uh, as, as an acquisition vehicle, especially when you have uh, a, a targeted set of search queries that clearly are growing in volume dramatically. So 30% of Box's acquisitions happening on a mobile phone. That's form fill. That's click to call. We can share with you best practices on where to send your traffic. It relates to the earlier conversation about your site. I'm not going to go deep on that today, but if you're thinking acquisitions, please come ask us for help. The last category I had was sort of deep branding. I want to give an example here from the consumer world of something that Reebok with Cara did to take advantage of multi-platform. Multi-platform is another message that we're talking to people about a lot because we're showing that the two are better together, which is a term we're trying to trademark, but it turns out people have used that before. Reebok, again, Cara for Reebok, ran this campaign across multiple properties, and we're going to show you some different elements of the campaign. So it was mobile, it was tablet, and it was also desktop. So this is something that they benchmarked against historical campaigns that they had run just on the desktop. Here they ran on YouTube with a masthead, which allowed them to play some cookies and do some remarketing. And the remarketing happened on mobile as well as on the desktop. So a lot of really effective marketing techniques. And on top of that, they leverage rich media on tablets as well. So in the example here, what you see is you see a video box with using some of their existing assets with some interactivity around it um, that allows you to do some really, really compelling things on a touchscreen device that gets the, the user engaged. Uh, and again, you see all the brand metrics that we talked about earlier. So the results from this, I'm out of range, is that based on their internal benchmarks, this dramatically outperformed. I'm not going to read all these, but they have benchmarks on where they wanted to be on tablets from Cara and from the client. 
Again, on brand conversions, the study that we just showed, the number of people that got to a destination, that completed the video view, that actually engaged in the way that the client wanted, and the people who responded to a video. So a very, very effective part of an overall strategy and a branding strategy, as well as a standalone strategy as well. This is the number that blew me away. It's sort of a nine times higher click-through rate based on remarketing from the desktop and the YouTube campaign, which establishes a large base to with, with whom to remarket to, is the people who clicked on and engaged with the ad on YouTube ultimately got remarketed to here. And I'll talk a little bit about, about remarketing now. So that was three quick sort of best practices of categories. One around engaging user for awareness. The second around um, information seekers, finding people who are actually looking for what you offer. And the last round sort of big sight, sound, motion, um, branding, and rich media. So quickly, talking about where we're investing. And I promise you I'm near the end. Four areas that we think are critical to mobile fulfilling, because mobile has the scale, mobile has the ability to deliver that engagement that we've talked about, but things that we're investing in very heavily. I spoke about remarketing already. Remarketing and finding that user and engaging that user in the moment is a very, very powerful tool that has not existed in mobile, and it's something that will become at scale in 2012. It's a place where Google's leading, and it's a big investment on our part across different properties. The second is ad serving. Being able to actually track and have your agencies manage campaigns in the way that you're accustomed to on desktop and having that all centralized. Mobile historically has been, frankly, somewhat separate. And so as a result, what we've worked really hard to do is leverage DFA and allow people to be able to, sorry, people know what DFA is? <laughs> leverage double-click ad serving uh, and allow people to track and manage campaigns centrally and also to track all the way through after the click to whatever it is the result that you're looking for. So mobile becomes much more manageable and quantifiable from the beginning. The next is rich media. You saw what Reebok did with templates. Um, a lot of talk about IAD, a lot of talk about what rich media means on mobile. We believe that the agencies are absolutely critical to this. The agencies are who you look to for advice. And so we're looking to sort of open source rich media on mobile. So our belief is that we want to provide sort of the building blocks of rich media so it, it accelerates the investment on the part of the agencies and makes it much, much easier for you to invest in rich media. And the last is commerce and wallet, which again is an entire hour in and of itself, but making it much easier to transact on a mobile phone. Whether that is form filling, software form filling, where there's a, a permission-based, privacy-based way to store user information that allows them to populate a form, or whether it's ultimately the ability for me to take my phone and tap on something and pay. That's all coming. We have lots of information all that if that's of use to you or of interest to you. I'm not going to go deep on it, but all of these paint a picture of a platform that is manageable, effective, and at scale right now. Make sense? So I want to end with a video that shows you some of the formats, and then I'm, I'm saving some of my time for questions because I usually get questions on mobile. Can we run the video? proud of the results that we drove 
helping these customers reach decision makers in this category for the people that you just saw. You see it across search, which was not in that video, and you see it across all of these display formats. So I'm a complete geek about mobile. I wanted to share a little bit. I want to actually share something very personal that happened to me this week as by way of closing and then take some questions if they tell me I have time. So my dad had some surgery this week. Um, he's fine. Uh, but he had surgery very near his brain. And he had a couple of small complications associated with this. And we ended up back in the hospital. And the doctor who had done the surgery on him was in Washington, D.C. And they did a CAT scan on my dad. I was standing in the hospital, very stressed out. They did a CAT scan on my dad. And 10 minutes later, the phone rang. And it was the doctor in Washington, D.C. who was looking at the CAT scan results on his phone. This is not ninjas killing watermelons. This is doctors using this as part of their everyday life. So it's a personal example. My dad is fine. Uh, but this is something that's going to be a part of every single thing that we do. It's the device we all have on us all of the time. Uh, I hope it was okay that I shared a personal example. It illustrates for me why I think that mobile is changing everything. Thank you.